Today on the show starts a brand new revolution, a new era is about to begin in the world of Indian mobile phones. Why am I saying that? Well, the story will reveal all. In my hand is a phone that is truly going to be a game changer. The Indian market very cleanly divided up till now. Big brands, big premium prices, smaller Indian brands, fantastic prices and incredible specs in hardware. Suddenly comes the Motorola E. Big brand. What does this do now to the Indian market? How will the Indian competition react? All of that happening on the Cell Guru Show. Cell Guru goes hands on with the all new Moto E. High end specs, rock bottom pricing. How will the Indian brands compete against this rocket from Moto? LG announces the G3, the successor to the super successful G2. Does it have the right features, specs, and innovations to shine brighter in the galaxy? Philips, known for its electrical appliances, forays into the world of phones with four handsets. Alcatel 2 launches the Idol X Plus in India. And in our techometer, we grill up the brand new Panasonic P81 and the Spice Stellar 360. Do they pass our tough test? And before that revolution starts, lots of other news that is making headlines and hopefully will each turn into a small mini revolution of its own. Let's take a look at all the news from the world of mobiles. If a company has a super successful phone with outstanding features, innovations and the right amount of gimmicks, what does it do next? Well, it launches the successor to that phone. That's what this device is all about. The LG G3 is the sequel to the G2 that won rave reviews last year. It has a 5.5 inch screen with a fantastic 538 ppi. That's some pixel density. It has a battery of 3000 mAh and the battery consumption has been minimized as well. There's an interesting twist to the UI with the six quick circle apps for shortcuts. Other useful add-ons include a 1 watt speaker with boost amplifier. The 13 megapixel back camera has an innovative laser focus that can measure distance in the dark for accurate and faster focus even in low light. It runs on the Android KitKat OS and uses a quad core 2.5 GHz processor. Looks like the G series is all set to shine bright in the galaxy. Maybe Samsung should be worried. Philips, a company long known for its Walkman, stereo systems and television sets, has forayed into the smartphone world. Not one, not two, but it has hit a home run with as many as four new phones. The W6610 is a smartphone with a mammoth battery of 5300 mAh and it claims to give 33 hours of talk time. It is priced at around 20,000 rupees. A little lower at around 16,000 rupees is the W3500 with a 5-inch screen, a quad-core processor and a slightly dated Android 4.2 OS. The S308 is a dual SIM phone flaunting good design and looks, priced well at around 8,000 rupees. The most pocket-friendly of the lot is the simple feature phone E130 priced at 1900 rupees with dual SIM, FM and memory card support. Reviews on Cellguru very soon. Alcatel launched the One Touch Idol X Plus at an event in New Delhi. Following the recent trend, the phone has been launched in an exclusive partnership with Flipkart for retail in India. It has a 5 inch full HD screen and is powered by a 2 GHz octa core processor. It is available in variants of 16 and 32 GB but lacks additional memory card support. It has a 13.1 megapixel camera at the back and a 2 megapixel front camera. The dual SIM phone is priced at around 17,000 rupees. The company has also packed in JBL earphones and a Bluetooth enabled boom band for fitness enthusiasts. Alcatel is expected to launch more phones in India in the near future. This now is our top story, what I'm calling the brand new start to a revolution in the Indian mobile market, the Moto E. Now, why am I so gungo about it? Well, the review will tell you all, but it's really about the business strategy. Motorola at one time, truly the kings of mobile phones, then lost momentum, then made a comeback with some great new designs, again died out, and eventually the company completely was dead and buried to most people. Then Google comes back, does something interesting and suddenly Motorola in the last three releases has become a formidable force to be reckoned with. The Moto E is a prime example of that. At about 6,900 rupees, this is a phone with almost no compromises. It's got Corning Gorilla Glass, it's got a great processor, fantastic to hold, great screen, uh, runs very, very fast, good battery life. 
almost nothing for us to really criticize on the face of it. It's 7,000 rupees. So what is the Indian competition? They are the ones who really are dominant in this market space. What do they do now? Is this really as good as I'm making it out to be? This is the Moto E, as detailed a review as we've ever done. Budgets differ, expectations don't. And to cash in on just that, Motorola brings its Moto E at 6,999 rupees to fulfill expectations and make other smartphones look very expensive. The name of the game in the Indian market is to bring in high spec phones at rock bottom prices. But this game is played by Indian brands and local players. When a multinational iconic brand plays the same game and plays it better, it's time for a revolution to awaken. That is what the E from Motorola represents. While it's cheaper than the competition, it's nowhere close to cheap. The E feels like a real smartphone with features that can blow its competition clean out of the water. The Moto E's motto is made to last. Price for all is its tagline and also its soul and spirit. Moto E follows design cues from the Moto G and Moto X and has an even more pronounced curved back that feels very good to hold. This phone is a little heavy at 142 grams for its tiny appearance, yet it feels solid. More noteworthy than the looks is the fact that it is splash proof and dust proof. The Moto E comes with a 4.3 inch display with a resolution of 950 by 540 pixels. This is much higher than the displays found on most smartphones at this price point. The display is relatively crisper and while the viewing angles are not great, they are better than what's available in this price range. The display also gets Corning's Gorilla Glass protection, which is unheard of at this price point and no other smartphone priced below 10,000 rupees provides it. Having the latest Android 4.4.2 is a huge plus on this device. It runs on an almost stock Android UI and will always be the first to get the latest software updates. This is where even the most expensive phones suffer. The touch interface is snappy and accurate. One of the shortcomings of the Moto E is its camera. It has a 5 megapixel back camera with a fixed focus that just doesn't match the standards of earlier motos. There is no LED flash like most smartphones in this price range and then there is no front facing camera either. Sai, the only chink in its armor. The Moto E comes with a 1.2 GHz dual core processor paired with 1 GB of RAM. It runs fluidly with no lag whatsoever. The Moto E features 4 GB of onboard storage. Add up to 32 GB memory card in the phone. The 1980 mAh battery will easily give you a full day's worth of usage. The other important consideration is that the Moto E is only available on Flipkart, a business model that has worked for both companies to reduce retail costs. Selguru Verdict, it's a game changer, a complete brand builder and a fantastic value for money phone. Motorola has cracked the price barrier just right, making it a step ahead from its competition. If you don't mind giving up on a front camera, Moto E is the best Android under 10,000 rupees. Case closed. Okay, that's our review, but that's really not the complete story. The market that Motorola has entered is a very, very tough one. And that is, Indian brands have a flood of devices for about six to 7,000 rupees. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two of those from two of the best companies in India, around 7,000 rupees, their best offering, and do a direct head-to-head -head shootout between the Moto E and those two. Moto E changes everything. Earlier, our shootouts were amongst the most expensive and flagship smartphones of the companies. Now, the bigger battle takes place in the budget smartphone category as Moto E gets launched at 6,999 rupees, a price point that has the biggest sales in terms of sheer numbers. This is also a space totally dominated by Indian brands. This shootout will determine who is king. While we won't get international brands competing, the contenders are Moto E, Micromax Unite 2 and Lava Iris X1. The Moto E comes with a 4.3 inch display with 960 by 540 pixel resolution. The Unite 2 features a 4.7 inch display with 800 by 480 pixel resolution. And the Lava Iris X1 has a 4.5 inch display with 480 by 854 pixel resolution. While the Moto E is smaller in size, it offers a better display resolution. Apart from that, the Moto E's display also has Gorilla Glass 3 protection, unlike the Unite 2 and the Lava Iris X1. 
Moto E scores big here. The Unite 2 and the X1 are both powered by quad core processors but different chipsets. The Moto E is powered by a 1.2 GHz dual core processor. The three phones come with 1 GB of RAM but in real life performance almost all of them are at par as the KitKat OS is not that resource hungry. The Moto E and the Unite 2 both sport 5 MP cameras while the Lava X1 comes with an 8 MP. Also, Unite 2 and Lava Iris X1 have an added advantage of an LED flash and autofocus. Moreover, the Unite 2 and the X1 have a 2 megapixel front facing camera, something that the Moto E lacks. Though Motorola's Moto E was the first smartphone to offer Android 4.4.2 KitKat at this price point, Micromax and Lava also ensured that their phones don't lack in this segment. But Moto E hands down offers the best Android experience as it has no excess baggage. The Moto E, the Micromax Unite 2 and the Lava Iris X1 compete very closely in most departments but when it comes to extras, Moto E clearly takes the award. Some of the additional features on the Moto E include a nano coating that protects it against the accidental splash of water. The Unite 2 is preloaded with 20 regional languages. The Moto E and the Unite 2 have almost the same battery of around 2000 mAh. The Lava Iris X1 comes with only an 1800 mAh battery. The Moto E and the Unite 2 are launched at exactly the same price which is 6999 rupees. The Lava Iris X1 is priced at 7999 rupees and can be bought only online from Amazon India. The Indian companies have dominated this space till now but an iconic multinational brand has just wrested the crown from right under their feet. The Moto E rules this space for now, also ensuring that a brand new war in this category will bring in even more amazing phones at even lower prices. We'll take a quick break right now on Cell Guru, but remember so much more we've covered, even more to come. Techometer, second screen, your questions all coming up on Cell Guru right after the break. Welcome back. This is the Cell Guru Show. You're joining me after the break and we're moving into our new section. This is Techometer brand new products, our advice and also our opinion as to who these are best for. Quick reviews, quick decision. This is Techometer. Amidst all the devices I'm sitting here with right now, I've actually managed to shortlist two to score on Techometer this week. We will start with the recently launched Panasonic P81. It is huge. It has something like a plastic leather bag that also reminds us of Samsung Note 3 and it is an octa-core phone. While there's already a lot of competition existing in the market in the octa-core phone segment, this phone is priced at 18,990 rupees. The P81 comes with a massive 5.5 inch IPS HD display that offers crisp visuals with good viewing angles. The smartphone is powered by MediaTek's true octa-core chipset which is paired with 1 GB of RAM. However, its competitors like Micromax and Intex are already providing 2 GB of RAM in their octa-core phones. Panasonic has added a number of software features on top of the vanilla Android 4.2 Jelly Bean, which sports a 13 megapixel camera on the rear and 2 megapixel camera on the front. The rear camera can shoot full HD videos. The P81 is a dual SIM phone and has 8 GB of internal storage. Who should buy this? If you're looking for a tablet and a phone hybrid with a budget of about 18,000 rupees. If you like the Samsung Note but don't have that kind of budget. Love to watch movies or videos on the phone. If you're a gaming enthusiast, who should avoid this? If you can't handle or pocket a large screen phone, there are cheaper options with octa-core processors. On our differentiator scale, P81 has a slight premium edge to it due to the Panasonic name and also it scores with a more aggressive price, 7 on 10. And on our techometer, this smartphone clocks in well. It gets an 8 on 10. Now I thought these were extinct. Touch and type. The latest Spice Teller offers best of both worlds, and I can't stress enough on the fact that it has a full QWERTY. 
The Spice Stella 360 comes with a 3.5 inch touch display which is decent and a QWERTY keypad placed below the display. The phone is powered by a 1.3 GHz dual core processor coupled with 512 MB of RAM. There's 4 GB of internal memory thankfully expandable by up to 32 GB using a micro SD card. The phone comes with a 3.2 megapixel camera and a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. Connectivity option, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are on the software front. It runs on Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. Now the Stella 360 is a dual SIM phone. It's priced very well at 5000 rupees and available as an exclusive deal only on Amazon.in. Who should buy this? Those of you who love the feel and comfort of a keypad. Those who miss that on an Android phone and those who don't want to go back to BlackBerry. Who should avoid this device if you're looking for a good camera on your phone? On our differentiator scale, Spice has got the QWERTY back, so it deserves an 8 on 10. And on our techometer, this smartphone offers the best of both worlds at 5,000 rupees, so again, it gets an 8 on 10. So then, that was techometer for this week. Let us know how the two gadgets fare on your techometer. Write to us at cellguru at letv.com. I'll be back next week with more new gadgets to score on Very Tough to Please Techometer. Let's move on now to our second screen question. Sudipto Sarkar has a very interesting observation converted into a question. Is only exclusively selling phones online the next big marketing wave? For instance, the Motorola phones from the Moto E to the G only available on one online retailer. Well, you know, so that's a very interesting observation, really. But it's not as much a marketing strategy as a business strategy. First, if you go with a single retailer and you only sell it online, you cut away a massive number of costs from the retailer's margin, distributors, actually porting those phones all over the country, going through five or six different channels. All of that is basically cut into just one, which is online, and that's pretty much it. And if you can advertise that well, you can sell that phone cheaper, better, and actually keep a quality of service that may not be available else. But you've got to make a big name for yourself and make a big dhamaka, as they call it, in the Indian market for a phone to sell that well online. Motorola has done that. Let's see if others follow. And now for the poll of the week. This is the result of last week's poll. This week's question is... Would you prefer buying a phone online or from a retail store? Online as it gives better deals or retail as it's important to experience the phone? Use the power of the NDTV second screen to cast your vote. Well, with that poll, it brings us to the end of Cell Guru for this week. But as always, do write to us at cellguru at ndtv.com. For anything you want, you can also directly speak to me or at least tweet to me on Twitter. I shall leave you now with a preview of the next week's show. See you then.